everyone, welcome back. Thanks for coming in today. So today we're gonna to be talking about the concept of fractions. So we have three overall objectives for the day. So the first one is to understand what the basic concept of fractions are. The second is to understand why fractions are important, both in everyday life and for on the ACT. And the third one is to understand how to add and subtract fractions. So moving on to the basic vocab of a fraction. So what a fraction is, is that it represents a part of a whole number. So there are three main parts of a fraction. The first part is the numerator, so that's the top number of the fraction, and that represents the part of a whole. Then we have the dividing line in between, and then we have the denominator, which is the bottom number, which represents the whole number that we're talking about. So there's a lot of different ways in life that fractions can now apply. Some are baking, measuring ingredients, or telling time, but one that we're going to talk about today is money. So let's say that we have one quarter of a dollar. One quarter is equal to 25 cents. So that way we would have four quarters each of 25 cents. And when we write that in the fraction, we would have the one quarter that we have, the 25 cents, over the total 100 cents in a dollar. But now let's say that we have two quarters, so we have 50 cents. So we have one quarter worth 25 cents, and we have a second quarter worth 25 cents. So when we write that as the fraction, we have 50 cents total is what we have, the part that we have, over 100 cents of the dollar total. So while those are kind of big numbers, what we'll want to do is try to simplify those fractions down. And that's really important for the ACT because a lot of times the answer that you get for a question using fractions will have to be reduced down in order to match one of the answers on the test. So the way that we can do that is we find a common factor between the numerator and the denominator and then we divide both by that factor. So what is one number that we could divide both 25 and 100 by? 25. Yeah. Awesome. So if we divided 25 by 25, that would give us? One. Awesome. And then we divided 100 by 25, that would give us? Four. Awesome. So that means that we have one fourth. And that relates back to what we were saying here because we have one quarter of a dollar. And so both one quarter and 25 over 100 mean the same thing. They both represent that we have 25 cents of the dollar. So now down here for when we had 50 cents, what's one common factor that we could divide both 50 and 100 by? 50. Awesome. So if we do 50 divided by 50, what would that give us? One. Great. And then if we did 100 divided by 50, what would that give us? Two. Awesome. So that means that we have one half of a dollar. So one half of a dollar is the same thing, again, as 50 over 100, just a more reduced way to find that fraction. And that's super important for the ACT. So the last thing that we're going to do today is adding and subtracting fractions. So one good way to think about this is to think about a pizza. So let's say we had a pizza in our classroom that was split up into eight equal slices. And then you ate four slices of the pizza, meaning that you ate four of the eight, so we can write the fraction as four parts over total eight parts, and you ate two of the eight slices, and we can write that fraction as two slices over the total eight slices. And we wanted to figure out how many slices total we're eating. So the way that we add fractions is we just add the numerators together and leave the denominator alone. So if we added four plus two, what would that give us? Six. Awesome, and we leave the denominator alone, so we come over to eight. So we ate six eighths of the pizza. Now let's practice subtraction. It's pretty much the same thing all we have to do is subtract the numerators together and leave the denominators alone. So this one is showing us how we want to figure out how much of the pizza is left. So if we started with eight pieces out of eight pieces and we ate six out of eight pieces, how much do we have left? We do eight minus six and what does that give us? Two. Awesome. And we leave the denominator alone and have eight. Now going back to what we talked about before, we want to simplify these fractions down. So we want to reduce them so that they can be at their simplest form. So what is one common factor that we could divide both 6 and 8 by? 2. Yes, so if we divide 6 by 2, what Three. would that give us? Three. 3. Awesome. And we divide 8 by 2, what would that give us? 4. Awesome. So we have 3 fourths. So we ate 3 fourths of the pizza, which represents the same thing as 6 eighths, but is just in a more reduced form. And let's do that one more time down here with 2 eighths. So what's one factor that we could divide both 2 and 8 by? 2. Awesome. So if we do 2 divided by 2, that gives us? 1. Awesome. And we do 8 divided by 2? 4. 
Great, so we have one fourth of the pizza left. And when we put those together, we have the total pizza of, the total pieces of eight pieces. Great, thanks so much for coming. I hope you learned a little bit about fractions and how to approach them on the ACT.